Shoo my pretty eye and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Anwin for anyone who's new here and let's get back into Planet Zoo. And we are gonna be building something today, but I thought to start with, I would show you what I'd been doing off camera. If you're not interested in the plan for the zoo and you just wanna go straight into the start of the building, skip to whatever time I'm putting over there and I'll go straight into building. But if you'd like to stick around and see what I have in mind for the future of this zoo, stick around and I will tell you. So what I've done is I've done some more track and we have a station here now and then that track goes around here and around this habitat. I have built the barriers for each habitat I'm planning on doing in this zoo so I could lay everything out properly. So we've got like a nice track going around right next close to this habitat here and this one's going to be for the clouded leopard and then we have another one here which i am going to be putting the komodo dragon in now when you might notice that's not one of the southeast asian animals and you're right it's not but it is it does live in southeast asia so we're gonna kind of expand a little bit from just the pack animals to do some from base game well komodo's from deluxe edition but yeah kind of some asian animals from base game too so we're gonna have komodo here what we're building today is gonna go here and then we've got another station stopping here as you can see and i thought the view from like this area is just so cool wanted it a little slightly higher and yeah you got like a really good view of the mountains over on this direction and then you come out of this station straight onto the proboscis monkey habitat and then we have two small habitats on these little areas here which is going to have the pangolin chinese pangolin and peafowl i know the indian peafowl but they're still from asia so they're gonna go here and we just wanted some small habitats fit them in in those little gaps and then last but not least this is going to be the sunbay habitat this is our plan and we don't have to do it in any specific order or anything i just wanted to let you know what sort of animals i wanted in these habitats so I'm gonna get into building the bug house which is gonna go right here and I will see you then. So let's get into the bug house now. And I wanted the exterior to match in with the rest of the buildings in the zoo. I really liked how I'd done the station building so that's what I wanted to do for this building as well. Keep the pink theme going with everything and have that like nice grey brickwork too. My plan for this one was to mainly focus on the giant Malaysian leaf insect but also try to draw customers or guests into this building as well by adding shops and some toilets in too. I had a look at what other exhibit animals could fit in into this Asian themed zoo because I didn't want just the leaf insect to be in this giant building and the only other Asian exhibit animal I could find was the giant forest scorpion so that one's going to be in this building too I had a look on YouTube at some videos of real bug houses in zoos and I found one that is in Houston Zoo and their interior was very very dark everything was black and dark I haven't actually been in a bug house myself I'm terrified <laughs> so I've never really gone into bug houses because I'm terrified of spiders and I'm terrified of creepy crawlies so I've always avoided them if I've gone to zoos I've not really gone to the 
bug house part of it so kind of had to look around uh, on YouTube at real zoos and I thought it would be cool to make it completely dark on the inside so my plan for this was to make the outside match the whole zoo with the traditional pink and white Asian style building pink white and grey really then on the interior I'm using the same concrete as the pink but I've just recolored it black and then because it's just a giant big box and I'm kind of feel like I'm boring if I just do square boxes I think it's just because I had an aversion to it while building houses in The Sims. I don't like box houses in The Sims, so I try not to make everything really, really boxy uh, in Planet Zoo as well. It's a little bit more difficult. To judge it up a bit, I thought I could add a nice bright conservatory. Uh, just all glass panels, very modern. So this is like a modern extension to the building and this is for like a seating area for the guests to um grab some food from the little bug house and then sit by out by here and this has got an absolutely beautiful view of the mountain top overall all of those mountains across the zoo. This would be a really nice place to grab a little bit of lunch after walking around half of the zoo. Stop here, sit and look over at that beautiful view and enjoy a nice little snack to replenish your energy, ready to walk around the rest of the zoo. If you remember, I haven't actually opened this zoo at all yet. I have no idea how guests are gonna walk around. What are they going to like? What are they going to dislike? Whether they're going to be able to get around all of this until they get tired and want to go home. I'm not sure, but I don't really care either. It's a sandbox. It doesn't really need to be profitable, does it? So now onto the interior. I started off by splitting this up into four because I wanted to do two separate sections for exhibits and two separate sections for food and bathrooms. So <laughs> I was very irritated to find out that I couldn't just place these exhibit buildings on top of my grid of pathway. So I end up cutting a lot of this out because it's really fiddly, but I did get the exhibits in fine. Food and drink in this little quarter here. And I do realize that I've put the wrong shop in. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of tricky just trying to get everything to look nice, get everything to fit in nicely and not mess up my nice grid pathways. And I've never really built frames around the exhibits. The last exhibit house I built was really wacky. <laughs> I built a giant pirate ship for the terrapins, diamondback terrapins. Oh, that one's a little hard to say. So making something kind of a little bit more realistic was interesting. I was kind of tempted to try and make like a giant leaf <laughs> for the leaf insect to live in, but why not get out of my comfort zone a little bit and make something a little bit more realistic too. So I'm trying to frame all of the different exhibits and the shops and the toilets and everything uh, around so it was slightly more covered and fit in nicely with the rest of like the building so everything's black at the moment it's very dark i will be bringing in a little bit touches of color here and there you know i gotta add in my pink <laughs> I've got into listening to music while I'm building at the moment. Usually I watch like YouTube videos or like live streams, something chill in the background, but I've been listening to some music while I've been building this habitat and it really helped me like zone in and really focus on what I wanted to build. <laughs> Normally I'm a little bit distracted watching something on YouTube or something and I'll 
just glance over and watch something while I'm building and kind of get a little bit distracted but I was really focused on this one. I've been going through a phase of just listening to more, I don't even want to call it retro, like music that I listened to when I was a teenager and I was going through YouTube music <laughs> and I've uh, finding all of the old songs that I used to listen to and then YouTube music suggested millennial mixtape. Yeah, I'm that predictable. <laughs> I was like, oh no, they know. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> the millennial mixtape was pretty good though. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but yeah, I've been going through like a phase of just listening to old rock music and zoning out and completely forgetting about anything else other than just zoning, building and jamming away to some tunes. <laughs> what sort of music do you like to listen to? So what I'm building at the moment is some sinks for the bathroom. I had like this little gap here. It, they sh there shouldn't be any cues for the bathrooms hopefully. So I just wanted to fill it in with like some way to wash your hands because of this uh, Panasonic that's going on. I, I thought w we would put something to encourage the zoo guests to wash their hands too. I guess it's all supposed to be in the toilets, like technically, but I wanted to put some fake sinks in. I don't think they look perfect. And I used some really odd things to fake a sink kind of pole for the tap some panels to create the like big sinks and a metal panel to fake a mirror it's not really all that shiny and reflective but it's metal so it's like a fake mirror there too and I actually found these blueprint items on steam so the I spy one I thought was amazing and it's like a little interactive board for guests. I thought that was really cool. That one is by Uncle Merc. And then the leaf insect sign and the leaf in insect education board is by Chester. Uh, and again, I'll write it all down in the on the video itself and in the description, it'll all be linked up. I just thought they were really cool to add into this little bug house and it's something that you would see in a real zoo. In the fun facts about the giant Malaysian leaf insect, it says that the leaf insects are actually asexual. The females can actually create their own offspring on their own. To signify that, I thought I would add in a little ace flag. <laughs> I imagine like the education boards or something would say something like that and let guests know that leaf insects are asexual too. So I wanted to add in like some flags um, about by the education boards and that one's quite large. I kind of struggled a little bit. I'm not sure whether I want to keep that one on there but Usually like flags are quite large anyway, aren't they? And then I wanted to make a teeny tiny one for this leaf insect to hold and to like wave the little ace flag. <laughs> I don't think I've done the purple quite right. I couldn't quite get the perfect shade of purple for the bottom of the flag, but I think it still looks really cool. I wanted to block off all light in this bug house, but I still wanted to add in some ceiling lights so i was trying to look for like a metal grate that could be like a part ceiling to hold some industrial strip lights and i couldn't quite find what i was looking for but i found this and it is a leaf pattern so i thought that would go really nicely with the giant leaf insect and kind of like hints towards that a little bit, but it's just a little bit of an extra pop of colour, extra detail. And it's a pity that I put a roof on this because the shadows that this creates are absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, that is just something to hold the lights on. I cut out the lights because it was really irritating putting them on and I didn't think you would really enjoy watching that. 
but yeah we got some strip lights on and now onto the roof i tried a few different styles of roof uh and i tried a few different ways of roofing this big square building and trying to make it look a little bit more interesting so what i went with is like what's that called this part <laughs> as the feature and then I wanted to do more of like a flat square around the edge of that to mimic some of the blueprint buildings from the East Asian style. I think it stopped it looking so plain but didn't make it look super faffy. I wanted this just to focus more on the interior of the building more than the ex exterior of the building. I wanted the exterior to obviously match in with the rest of the zoo but the interior decoration was like more of what I was focusing on. And I also wanted to add in a little bit of a white accent to match in with the windows and the modern conservatory area that really ties it in having that like little circle pattern and the strip of white around the middle of the building really ties in the conservatory and the windows and pink white and gray is like the whole theme of this isn't it so it really stands out but also ties everything together i really like that I also only included the female leaf insects in the exhibits. The females can reproduce on their own. I thought I would just include uh, females in there. And I kind of want to see whether in Planet Zoo that will work. And we will have baby leaf insects. They will on only be female. But I am kind of curious to know whether they've actually programmed that into the game. Or it was just in the fun facts. So I'll have to let you know. And then I've really been enjoying adding flower beds in uh, next to the paths that are on the ground. I've tried to make this more varied. So I've grabbed lots of different pink, uh, purple and blue flowers for the front and the back of this bug house. Bugs love flowers too, like bees love flowers. So ha having like a flower bed out the front and the back is like just a nice tie in with everything. I duplicated the one side of the flower bed around the back of the bug house as well because the pathways go around this area. I didn't want it to be completely blank. I wanted to fill in the back area as well and give that a flower bed too. I have talked and talked and talked. Wow. <laughs> I really enjoyed building this bug house. It added a little bit more realism into the zoo. So this is a little walkthrough of the bug house with the giant scorpions and the giant leaf insect, some shops, a couple of toilets and a nice place to sit while you have your chips and milkshake or fries and milkshake and look over at that beautiful view of that mountain top. I absolutely love it. Let me know what you think in the comments and what should we do next? I did let you know what animals I am planning on building habitats for in the beginning. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. We don't have to do them in any specific order and if you have an idea of what kinds of habitats that animal should live in let me know too and i'm gonna leave it off there if you enjoyed the video smash that like button and if you haven't already and you would like to it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever i upload a new video i upload on wednesdays and saturdays thank you so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and i will see you next time goodbye <laughs>